Okay, guys, so let's finish this chapter by talking about different cost functions. I know you already know this stuff from Intermediate Micro, but once we find the total cost, remember, so total cost is basically um, choosing the optimal input levels and then uh, calculating or recalculating the cost function R times K plus W times L. Um, well, obviously, you may a producer may uh, may have a higher cost, uh, not not because the cost uh, the technology is worse, but because the the producer is not choosing the input levels optimally. All right, so there are different reasons why the cost can be higher than the theoretical optimal cost. One reason is, well, maybe the technology is worse than, uh, you know, the, the current technology is worse than the one that's used for the calculation. Or two, well, the technology and the input prices may be the same, but the thing is the input, uh, inputs that are used for uh, producing the output are not selected optimally, all right? Uh, so anyway, so let's suppose we calculated the cost function. So we call it usually total cost. So let's denote it by C of Q. Well, there are two concepts we define, remember, average cost versus marginal cost. So mathematically, average cost is just taking the average of the cost, all right? Uh, so it's CQ divided by Q. Marginal cost, however, is the slope of the cost function. So basically, you take the derivative of the cost with respect to quantity. Well, are they different? Almost always different. Um, well, why so? The average cost basically, so average cost is a, you know, think it this way, amount of money you need to spend per output. But whether you're producing one output or two output or three output, so given that, let's say, I am producing 10 outputs, all right? So what's the, marg uh, what's the average cost? Well, uh, cost per output you're producing. That means for the first output or the second or the fifth or the 10th output, the cost, the average cost will be the same. The marginal cost, however, is the cost of an additional output. All right, it's different than average cost because the marginal cost for the first output means um, consider the two scenarios. On the one side, I produce one output. On the second scenario, I produce no output. So what is the difference between these two cost levels? All right, well, that's gonna give me the marginal cost of producing first output. What about the marginal cost of producing 10th output? Well, that's the, uh, look at the scenario where I'm producing 10, 10 outputs. Look at the scenario where I'm producing nine outputs. What's the difference? Be, what's the, the difference of these two costs? Well, then this difference is going to give me the marginal cost of the 10th output. And they're almost always different. Well, this is why I sort of draw this. The marginal cost curves and the average cost curves do not always have this shape. For example, in the previous example, uh, the marginal cost curve uh, was flat for uh, the Leontief production function, right? So it was flat. The average cost curve, however, was an, is, is, is also a flat curve. So anyway, but my point is the marginal cost curve and the average cost curve uh, if they are intersecting one another, they may. Uh, they may intersect at infinitely many points, but if they intersect uh, at some points, well, one of those points is definitely uh, what we call Q star, the efficient scale. It's normally and usually is the point, it's the level of output where the average cost is the lowest. Uh, well, what's the intuition behind this? Well, we can prove it mathematically, but I'm not going to do it. But intuitively, um, the marginal cost curves intersect the average cost curve at the minimal point because if the average cost curve is higher than marginal cost curve, all right, so this is the average cost curve, this is the marginal cost curve. So if AC is higher than MC, I'm talking about all the, re I mean, the region where output is less than this Q star level. Um, yes. Well, 
In this region, AC must be falling. Well, it is falling, but why? Well, what's the intuition behind this? Well, AC is, remember, the cost per output. And the marginal cost is the cost of an additional output. So here, for example, AC, let's say $10. All right. So that means for all the outputs I'm producing, I pay on average $10 per output. But if I produce one more output, its cost is $9. All right. So that means if I produce one more output, what's going to happen? The average cost is going to decrease. All right. So remember, the average cost is the cost divided by quantity. And so if the average cost is less than mar uh, bigger than marginal cost, well, then if I produce one more output, meaning I increase Q, yes, this will increase C as well. But because marginal cost is less than average cost, meaning the additional cost of this additional output is going to be $9, not $10. And so the average cost now is going to be less than 10. Uh, it's still going to be more than 9 probably, but it's going to be definitely less than 10. So AC must be falling. All right. So hence, I sort of verify it here. The opposite is true. If the average cost is less than marginal cost, meaning, uh, you know, one more additional item I produce, its cost is going to be higher than the average costs. All right, so for example, average cost is 10, but you know, producing one more item is $11. So if I produce this one more item, uh, that means I am increasing this C more than you know, uh, Q plus one. You see what I mean? So therefore the average cost will increase. So AC must be increasing. So therefore AC equals MC. When this is the case, um, well, it means that AC is neither falling, neither increasing, all right? And so if AC is falling in some range and increasing in some range, so there's some minimal point. So therefore, AC is equal to MC at that minimal point, all right? And so this Q star, meaning the MC is, if AC is intersecting a MC, uh, well, then it should be, uh, and one of those intersection points at least should be Q star. Well, why do I keep saying one of the points? Remember, in the previous example, we found C of Q is equal to 5Q divided by 6. So here, for example, this is quantity, this is cost. So if you draw the average cost, so what is average cost? It's equal to 5Q divided, I'm sorry, 5Q divided by 6 divided by Q. So it's 5 over 6. What is marginal cost? The slope of this, well, it, which, which is still 5 over 6. So that means the marginal cost is equal to average cost throughout. So that means any Q is in fact an efficient scale in this example. However, in the other example, the C of Q was equal to uh, Q squared divided by 2, if you remember. So what is average cost? Well, average cost is this divided by Q, so it's Q over 2. What is marginal cost? Well, the derivative of this guy, which is 2Q divided by 2, so the Q 2s will cancel out, it's Q only. So if you draw the marginal cost and the average cost for this uh, case, so C of Q equals Q squared divided by 2. So if you draw, this is Q versus cost graph. So uh, the average cost is Q divided by 2. So it's something like this. Uh, this is average cost. Well, what about marginal cost? Marginal cost is equal to Q. So look, this is uh, Q divided by 2 graph. This is marginal cost, right? Uh, so MC equals, uh, I'm sorry, this, this is uh, Q. Uh, clear? So here, MC and AC is intersecting only one point, not infinitely many point, and that point is the minimal point of AC. So this conclusion is still true. Uh, all right? That's it.